As a fantasy writer and reader, one of my favorite story elements is a dragon. But the dragon book edited by Jack Dan and Gardner Dozois is more than just a collection of stories featuring this mythical beast. It is an excellent example of how writers can twist tropes and stereotypes to create something new and exciting, as well as a great example of how to organize a collection of short pieces. So today I want to talk about the dragon book, How to Read Like a Writer. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with twisting tropes and stereotypes. Every genre has characters, creatures, or settings that are quintessential to that genre. You can say that word and readers automatically know what you're talking about. The desert landscape of New Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada in westerns are one such trope. So is the cheating husband in women's fiction, or dragons in fantasy. The beginning of the dragon book quotes Avram Davidson. He says, Although the wombat is real and the dragon is not, nobody knows what a wombat looks like, and everyone knows what a dragon looks like. This statement is very true, and it's true for aspects of a lot of genres, but it's also a double-edged sword. Yes, you can just say dragon and most people can imagine what that looks like, this will save you words, but it also means it's easy to fall back on the stereotype of that aspect of your story instead of making it your own. Well-known creatures like dragons really come to life when writers take the extra effort to make that specific dragon unique to their story. That's when readers really get interested. This isn't just a dragon. This is your dragon. The same goes for any trope you might be using in your writing. How can you twist it? How can you change it to make it unique to your story? To make it something that if a reader were to see an image of it, they wouldn't just say, that's a dragon. They would say, that's so-and-so's dragon. Use your trope or that basic feature of your genre as a jumping off point. Next, I wanna talk about pacing your reader's experience. The organization of stories in an anthology or collection is just as important as the arrangement of chapters in a book. This collection arrangement is going to control the overall journey of your reader. It should have an emotional pace and arc to it, just like the chapters of a book might. What that means is you don't want to have all of your funny stories back to back to back and then all of your tragic ones. You might want to mix those in a little bit more. In the Dragon Book, they don't have all of the stories featuring anti-heroes back to back and all of the stories with traditional heroes back to back. Jonathan Stroud's Bob Choi's Last Job is gritty and dark. He describes dragons as the gold scales glittering beneath the long, slow wing beats as they wheeled into the sun. In Cage Baker's Are You Afflicted with Dragons, the description goes, preening, squabbling over fish heads, defecating, spreading stubby wings in the morning sunlight. In the first story, dragons are fierce, intelligent creatures. In the second story, they're more like bats. However, in each of these pieces, they are clearly recognizable as dragons. When you are arranging your collection or anthology, pay attention to the order of stories and concepts, and make sure there is a through thread tying everything together. It doesn't have to be as obvious as all of these stories have dragons in them, but there should be something that is making these stories interact with one another. Make sure you are varying your high points of emotion with your lower ones your thrilling, fast-paced stories with the ones that are more like a lazy river. And just like the beginning and ending of a book, or a play, or some other performance, your readers are going to be the most impacted by the first story and the last story of your collection. So choose those stories wisely. Next, I want to talk about designing your collection. In a previous video, I covered why your book needs professional interior design. In the interior of an anthology, this is especially important. 
All of these stories come from different authors, so they have different voices. They sound different from each other. What's going to tie them together is that theme, but it's also the design of your book. Make sure your stories are consistently using the same symbols to show a change in scene or change in point of view. Make sure all of the extra spaces are the same width. You want to make these stories look like they belong together to help tie everything in. Last, I want to cover why an editor recommends a collection of short stories. Short stories, poems, and other shorter works are excellent places for writers to experiment and try new things, to sharpen their skills, to master other aspects of their craft. Even if you don't plan on creating a collection or using a short story, it's still a good exercise to write one. You can experiment with a common trope in your genre, or try writing something completely different just for a break. Another nice thing about short pieces is you get to the end faster, so you get that feeling of completion sooner. If you have a bunch of short stories that are related, or you know other authors who write similarly to you, you can then put those pieces together in a collection. Anthologies, collections from different writers, are a great way to help each other promote. You can share the work of marketing, and you can also give your readers something to read in between books. If you need an example of how to play with tropes in short stories, I suggest reading The Dragon Book. What's a favorite collection of short stories you have? Share it in the comments below. And for more videos on how to read as a writer, as well as other aspects of writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a timeline of a book, which will show you when you should be thinking about that interior design or collection arrangement, and when you should just be focused on sharpening those stories. And now it's your turn to twist tropes and organize your collection to ignite your ink.